An excerpt from the Declassified Galactic Survival Guide. Outside of the chaos the Empire sows, like they're the worst neighbor in existence, just determined to overflow your garden with stinging nettles and Gerard Allen's snapdragons, which actually do bite and should be avoided at all costs. But away from all of the general buffoonery and unpleasantness of the Sun Empire, there have been a few independent organizations that have arisen to fill the gaps of authority. Most are nothing of import are either too small or too unimportant to really make a mark on the lasting sweep of history. But a few stand out, one in particular so well-known, so far-reaching, that it's either respected, feared, adored, or a confusing combination of all three, in practically every system of Andromeda, and carries with it some of the most renowned names and titles to ever exist. Founded primarily as a giant middle finger in the face of the Empire, the Syndicate strives to collect those with exceptional talent and skills to add to their illustrious roster, compiling a deadly and accomplished cast of characters that is able to undermine the Sun Empire without worry for serious repercussion. With a leader so ubiquitously known for violence and general bloodshed, to the point that he's ascended into being somewhat of an urban legend of misfortune, an omen of death, as it were. Many would assume that the Syndicate is universally seen as the harbingers of destruction and suffering. But you know what they say about assuming. It's generally very rude, and doesn't give the other party a chance to explain their side of things, which is exactly what happens here. Because the Syndicate isn't reviled in the slightest outside of the painfully white and gilded boardrooms of Nerox, is seen instead as more of a friendly, Big Brother type of organization by the rest of the galaxy, a group of renegade do-gooders. While usually for hire through proper official channels, many syndicate members have been known to help out pro bono in a tight pinch. So, if hard-pressed and backed into a corner out in the wider cosmos, keep your eyes, or other seeing sensory organs, peeled for the distinctive jackets with their red collars something that's earned Syndicate members the rather affectionate nickname of Zvuka, or, in Imperial Standard, Redneck. All right, so here's the plan. Click, slip, and shuffle of new power cells being loaded into blasters, clacking and spinning as barrels are rotated, checking to make sure everything's working properly. Sap and I create a distraction out front, focus their attention there. Tebo, you go with George and get inside as quickly as possible. Don't get seen. Slide of nylar straps over clothes, buckles being tightened, and hauling lightweight but durable plastisteel armor into place. Hurried hands wrapping his busted knuckles in tight bandages. We need to get to the prince before they realize what we're doing, otherwise they'll move him, or cut their losses. Sharp intake of breath, dangerously hot arm around his shoulders. Sound of a plasma rifle being racked in the background. Piercing green eyes boring into his, leaving no room for arguments. We're here. It's going to be okay. We're going to get him back. So we get in, get out, try to keep the casualties to a minimum, but don't hesitate. Dream says, with deadly conviction. This form he's taken, more emotive than Tubbo's used to. Brows drawn down low over his luridly green eyes. Our top priority is getting the prince out of here safe, got it? Heard you loud and clear, chief. Sapnap responds easily. Flick stream a lazy salute where he's lounging up against the side of the weapon's cache. Blaster strapped on one hip and long handle of a thermal sword hanging off the other. George just nods his head. Sighting goggles perched up above his forehead and long, dangerous sweep of his rifle looming over one shoulder. As always, close by Dream's side. Doesn't take his eyes off him as the shifter slings his own weapons into place. Good. We head out in about five minutes. Make sure you have everything you need. He means make sure you go pee before the mission starts, Sapnap says almost immediately, eyes wide open and arched in a way that has George rolling his own, jabbing a finger in his direction. It was one time. Let it go. It wasn't even that funny. 
Uh, no, it definitely has happened at least twice, and it's the funniest shit, so... Sapnap shrugs his shoulders, looking entirely unrepentant as George clicks his tongue against his teeth, posture shifting in that way that means he's about to get into it. And usually, Tebo finds their playful bickering fun. But he just... Binary sun eyes, wide in alarm. Blaster pointed at his head, black blood splattering. Can't right now. Pushing off from the wall next to Sapnap, Tubbo heads down the cargo ramp and into the early evening, sun just starting to set and casting everything a molten gold, sun rays slanting down through the branches overhead. He folds his arms across his chest, tucking his hands tight around himself, and blows out a huge breath, trying to quiet the anxiety prickling in his chest and tremoring in his fingers. In the distance, through the haze of a burning hot twilight, the barely visible shape of the hideout curls around the topmost trunk of a tree, parts of it disappearing up into the leafy canopy. It looks like it was an old outpost at one point, before either the raiders or the Brotherhood started squatting here. Windows boarded up and leaking flickering light into the growing gloom, not giving anything away as to what's happening inside. Dark, slick floors and walls, boots loud out in the hallways, flickering, jumping lights, and sparks shooting out of broken wires. He's on his knees, hands bound behind his back, tail coiled as tight as it can get around one leg, shirt stained dark with blood, jerks as the latch to the door creaks open. Tabo's fingers bite into his sides harshly, because somewhere in there is Ron Boo and the frantic desire to leave now, to get there as fast as he can, bust through the front doors and make sure he's okay, that they haven't hurt him, that he's in one piece, is so strong, Tubbo's close to dropping over the side of the branch they've landed on. All your fault. Whatever happens to him is on you. Shouldn't have left him. Shouldn't have yelled. Should have been better. Queens, he has to be okay. He better be okay, or you're killing everything in there. Don't hesitate. Boots scuff behind him, obviously and purposefully, and Tubbo looks over his shoulder, sees Dream ambling his way towards him, hands stuffed in his pants pockets and concerned tilt to his face. They don't do many missions together, so it's a little strange seeing him in one of his other forms. But besides his natural body, Tubbo knows this is the other one he takes the most, the one that looks like whatever George is, a whom on or something. Hey, you doing okay? Dream asks, coming to a stop by Tubbo's side. And he snorts, turns away from his staring match with the hideout, and looks Dream in the eyes, not used to the way they blink and move. Not really. We're going to get him back, Dream says, and he's got one of those voices that's impossible to ignore, bleeds sureness and confidence sways practically anything over to his way of thinking, but it does little dousing the roaring, screaming panic that's consumed Tubbo since he heard those turbines. I just can't stop thinking about what's happening in there. Like, is he okay? Tubbo stammers, shifting around agitatedly on his feet. Have to go. Have to get to him, your friend, your partner. Can't leave him. Have they hurt him? Queens, what if they have? What if they got impatient? What if he's... Tubbo, hey, stop. Dream moves until he's all Tubbo can see, mouth set in a grim line as he claps hands on his shoulders, warm weight of his palms grounding him somewhat. Look, he's going to be okay. He's worth too much money. They're not going to kill him. Not now, at least. That Aurelian dream, Tebo stresses, and he can see the exact moment Dream has the same thought, Grimace tugging the lines of his face down, and his heartbeat picks up sharply. Uh, and he's an Ender Prince. You know what they, how much they, it, 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 it could be a message. Squeezing his shoulders, Dream ducks his head and looks at Tebo with the most determined eyes he's ever seen. We can't think like that, okay? We're going to get him back, I promise, Tubbo. 
I, I can't lose him, Dream. Tubba whispers thickly, few wayward tears slipping out, and before he can rub his eyes into a sleeve, Dream tugs him forwards into a hug, arms wrapping tight over his shoulders. It's unexpected, but he doesn't hesitate snaking his own arms around Dream's back tight, crushing them together as Tubbo buries his face in the collar of Dream's bomber, quiet tears leaking out of his eyes. Cold hands in yours, loud barking laughter and sparking eyes, slow, even beat of his heart at night, rigid shape of his horns under your antenna, incense smoke and stardust. And Tubbo shudders out a wet exhale, everything suddenly splattered with dark blood dripping down the walls, over the floor, staining his shirt, smoking crater in his head. Not him. Queens, anyone but him. And he can't do this. How is he supposed to do this? There's another weight thudding into his back, and it snaps his mind free. A body radiating heat like a roaring fire. Arms wiggling their way into the tangle, bright, hot, and incessant. A careful hand placed on his shoulder, fingers strong and sure, steadiest in the galaxy. We got you, man. Sapnap huffs right behind his ear, tips his searing head into Tubbo's, smooth, quiet flow of George murmuring next. It's going to be all right. This is your home now. Colorful halls and smiling faces around every corner. We stick together. A mess hall big enough for all of them. Messages that never go unanswered. We're there for each other. Warm hearts, itchy trigger fingers, solid back pressed against yours. Because that's what family's for. And Tubbo's not really one for empty reassurances. But he maybe lets himself believe them. Sucks in a calming breath and squeezes Dream back. Thuds his head into Sapnap. Works one of his own hands free to briefly touch at George's fingers, wrapped around his shoulder. It's okay. You're not alone, not anymore. Tubbo reminds himself as they all untangle, wiping the sticky residue of dried tears from his face. Nods when Dream cocks his head at him, silent answer to his unasked question. And Dream snaps his hood up, engulfing his face in shadow, save for where his eyes gleam in the dark, like winking navigation lights. Let's go. They race across the darkening branches of Giauet, swift-footed and near-silent, bounding over gaps and sliding under low-hanging branches, making their way closer and closer to where the hideout squats like an ugly growth on the tree trunk. Tubbo's pulse thuds loud under his ears when they make it to a hidden spot right above the facility, watches in trepidation as Dream and Sapnap get ready to drop over the side of the branch near the front entrance of the hideout. See you soon? George asks quietly, stepping up to Dream and touching him lightly on the cheek. And Dream leans closer, one of his own hands coming up, threading their fingers together briefly as he smiles. Wouldn't miss it. George nods and moves back, their hands disentangling slow, punches Sapnap on the arm and gets a middle finger for his troubles. And then the two of them are gone, one last cheeky salute from Sapnap as he disappears into the gloom. Not wasting a second, George beckons Tubbo to follow him, takes over leading them towards their holding position, moving quick but steady around the back of the hideout, slides to a stop and ducks behind a massive clustering of ferns. He holds a finger up to his lips and cocks his head, straining to hear anything in the night, and Tubbo slips his eyes closed. Sensory input from his antenna amplified as he focuses solely with them. Air currents drift steadily past. Now, now, please, start now. Insects sing low and thrumming in the rising darkness. Can't wait. Can't leave him. Tick-tock. It's calm. It's quiet. It's there. Whine of thermal blades. Shrieking. Feet scuffling. Pained shout. Electric snap and crackle of blaster fire. G George, they started. We need to... Give them a second. George hushes, pulling his sighting goggles down over his eyes, fiddling around with their settings, and Tubbo makes an irritated noise in the back of his throat, 
hands worrying at his own blasters. The sounds of fighting grow more noticeable and audible by the second. Loud screams and shouted expletives, his leg bouncing faster and faster as time seems to drag on forever. They could be hurting him right now. Cut their losses? Doesn't look like he'd be much trouble. Need to go. Can't wait. Every second lost. Dangerous. Tick-tock, tick-tock. Blaster pointed at his head. Anxiety mounting like a fire burning out of control. Finally can't take it anymore and whines. George! All right, move it. George orders. And Tubbo doesn't wait for him. Slides off the side of the branch and beats his wings a few times to slow his descent. Lands soundlessly on the roof of the hideout, George swinging down to join him not a moment later. There's a door up here, but it's locked when Tubbo tries it, and George motions for him to move, slings his rifle over his shoulder, and fires off a shot faster than Tubbo can process. The handle explodes in a shower of molten metal and splintering wood, any noise they made swallowed up by the commotion out front. And Tubbo is quick to duck inside, Blaster clutched in each set of hands as he creeps into the dimly lit hallway. He's greeted by a series of doors and branching passageways, looks over his shoulder at George with a helpless expression, and lets him take the lead, follows behind his sloped back as they dart down the winding corridors. Tubbo's never done extractions. He's never dealt with hostages and all of the dark, dirty things that happen in buildings like this defers completely to George as he moves through the facility in a sort of pattern that means nothing to Tubbo. It's okay. It's going to be okay. They're here. They came. You're not alone. Tubbo tries to keep his breathing quiet as he dashes after George's heels, grip around his blasters getting tighter and tighter the further they go, antsy waiting for a target. For the most part, the passages they run down are empty, but there's a few times when George pulls them up short, hands raised in a fist as they flatten themselves to the walls, wait with their hearts in their throats as feet thunder past, angry, panicked voices shouting about those thrice-damned Vukin, and shoot to kill shifter scum, and that dirty fucking faceless demon. And Tebo has to stop George with a quick hand on his arm a few times, jerking him back into hiding where he was about to step out with his plasma rifle racked and unholy retribution burning in his eyes. And he mouths a sheepish sorry every time, but Tubbo shakes his head because he understands. The universe is not kind, and it's not compassionate. Weaponizes what it can and won't stop to listen to things it doesn't understand. And to love someone that's been through such an ordeal is terrible agony. Breathes twitchy trigger fingers and howling rage. George would do anything for Dream. Would burn this entire facility to the ground. Wouldn't rest until he made sure the others were safe. Would mercilessly kill anyone that stood in the way of that. Not a single second of hesitance. And Tebo's come to realize he's the same. He knows for a fact. Can feel it, shrieking and clawing all the way down in his bones as they race through this maze of a hideout. Poking their heads quick into rooms, only to find nothing. That if anything's happened to Ronbu, if he so much as has a single nick on his face, Tubbo's going to round up every bastard in this building and shoot them between the eyes. It sits, snarling in his chest, like that shipyard fire, burning hotter and more out of control than anything he's ever felt. And the entire universe has narrowed down to the feeling of blaster grips growing warm in his hands, breathing harsh but trying to be quiet. Feet flying over dirty floors, and the sound of fighting clanging high and deadly like war drums. Where are you? Tebo's back thuds into a wall, hand clamped hard over his mouth to muffle his panting breaths, head swimming and screaming for oxygen. No, you're here. Feet slipping over loose grit, but he doesn't lose his footing, digs his toes in sharper, and keeps going. Have to be here, queens, please. Despair, rising up like an inky pit of tar. Because they're finding nothing. Every room is empty. Tick-tock, time is trickling away. Need you. Can't do this without you, queens. Please, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Tubbo. George hisses from up ahead, where he's eased a door open, looks back at him, 
with a complicated expression, and wrenches it the rest of the way open, slips inside, which has to mean head tipped back in laughter, black blood splattering on walls, glowing warm eyes, blaster pointed at his... Tabo must black out for a second. Next thing he knows, he's leaning against the doorframe. George crouched on the ground next to a lanky figure, all huddled into themselves, knobby knees drawn up and ankles bound, sack tied over his head, black stains down his shirt front. And Tabo doesn't think as he lurches forwards because that's blood. That's Rambu's blood, dried down his chest and not him. Anyone but him, you're going to kill them all. He hits the ground hard, knees cracking into the cement floor under them, blasters clattering, forgotten to the ground, as his hands immediately reach out. Stopped when an iron grip curls around one of his wrists, a low voice snapping. Don't touch him. You don't know what they've done. But uh, I... George... Tubba wheezes, watching helplessly as Rambu shrinks back from the two of them and agony races down his limbs, coiling and spreading like fire along trails of accelerant. What'd they do? Right between the eyes, every single one, no hesitation. G George, I... I have... I can't just leave him. You don't understand. I do, okay? But he could be drugged or in shock. Touching him right now could trigger a panic attack. We need to be careful. George says calmly, easing up on his grip as he turns to Ronbu, still speaking in that soft, even tone. Prince Ronbu, everything's going to be okay now. My name's George, and I'm with the Syndicate. Tubbo's with me. We're going to get you out of here. Ronbu doesn't act like he understood. Hunches into himself, and now that he's closer, Tubbo can tell that he's shaking. Arms tensed in a way that means his claws are probably savaging whatever they can get at. And George scoots forward a little, murmuring. Prince Rambu? Stop. Tubbo interrupts gently. Because Prince Rambu is all cold shoulders and echoing silences. It's empty eyes and a furious stutter. Desperation-fueled anger. It's loneliness and pain and a hundred horrible things. It's not going to do anything to help him. But Tubbo thinks he knows what will. Quick, fast, darting over rooftops, only one to catch you. Barking laughter, and dancing barefoot in the cargo hold. Warm, real smiles, and eyes that shine brighter than any stars. Hand in yours, like it's always belonged. Nickname, whispered out in the gentle, dark hush of the night. Eyes never leaving Ronbu, Tubbo doesn't reach out to touch him, but he gets as close as he dares, makes sure his voice is summer warm and sweet. Hey, Boo. Everything's gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay, Boo, promise. We're here to get you, okay? Can I get that bag off you? He doesn't untense, exactly, but something in his posture changes, and Tubbo shoots a quick look at George. And when he nods, Tubbo crawls across the floor, touches Rambu's shoulder briefly, and bites his lip hard when he jerks, startled sound leaving his mouth. I'm not gonna hurt you, Boo. Tubbo whispers hoarsely, hands very carefully and very slowly, picking at the knotted cord wrapped around his neck. Hates the way his throat jumps and works under his fingers. When it finally comes undone, Tubbo drags the bag off gingerly, remembering to make sure not to catch it around Rambu's horns. But something about it feels weird as he's slipping it over his head, reason for that becoming apparent immediately. Rambu's left horn is gone, broken off close to his skull, jagged end of what's left sticking out of hair that's matted with blood. No, 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 no. Tubbo stammers, can't stop himself from cupping Rambu's face in shaking hands, fingers feeling the tackiness of drying blood all down the left side of his face, and tips his head up, strangled cry falling out of his mouth once he sees how unfocused and hazy his eyes are. No, Queen's 
Fuck, I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry. Boo, fuck, I'm so sorry. Rambu's eyes blink, slowly. No recognition or anything in them. Looks like he's sleepwalking or something. And Tebo turns to look over his shoulder in panic at George. What's wrong with him? Shuffling closer, George shines a light from his handheld into Rambu's face, clicking his tongue when his pupils don't contract at all. They dosed him with something. Probably flunitrazepam or lycotremonol. You'll be okay, just out of it for a while. Nausea rolls like a flood in Tubbo's stomach, mouth filling with the sick taste of bile, eyes stinging fast and sharp with the threat of tears. But before he can start crying or throw up, their earpieces fizz to life, Dream's winded voice crackling through the connection. You guys find the prince yet? Yes. He's injured, but it's non-fatal. How are you two? George responds, twisting to his feet evenly, and it's Sapnap's equally strained voice that filters through this time. Just hunky-dory, Georgie boy. Want to come play roundup? Tubbo? George's voice gets him to snap his head up, serious set to his face as he's slinging his rifle off his shoulder. Will you be okay for a second? It's okay if you need me to stay. Y yeah yeah no, I'll be fine. Go do what you gotta do. Tubbo says shakily, reluctant to leave Rambu alone as he gets to his feet as well, but he has to follow George out so he can latch the door behind him, pausing at the threshold. George shoots him one more demanding look, and he doesn't get half the credit he deserves because standing there with his plasma rifle in his hands and that look in his eyes. He's more intimidating than Dream ever could be. Call us if you need anything. Do you understand me? Tubbo almost says, Sir, yes, sir, but catches it right as it's about to leave his mouth. Stuffs it back into the box it's slipped out of and says instead, Of course. And George? He tilts his head to the side in acknowledgement, and Tubbo worries for a split second until he remembers... Unholy retribution in his gaze. He'll understand. Seething, spitting fire aim right between the eyes, no hesitation. Knows his voice is shaking with that terrible anger when he growls. Don't miss. Never do. George says with a nasty grin, racking his rifle and loading a new charge into the barrel. And then he's gone, footsteps hushed as he heads for the front of the facility. Closing the door with a definitive thud, Tubbo slams the bar latch into place and whirls back around, heart dropping out of him when he sees Rambu slumped over again, head hanging down between his shoulders. He hurries back over and kneels down at his side, hands quickly flipping out his tactical knife to cut through the cords binding his wrists together. Tries not to panic at the slick glide of blood under his fingertips. You're okay. Boo, you're okay. I'm here now. I'm so sorry. Shouldn't have left you. All my fault. Queens, I'm so sorry. Tubbo snaps his mouth shut, though, when he hears the faintest sound of something. Scrabbles around to Rambu's front, and he's still staring forward, unseeing. But his mouth moves the barest amount, and Tubbo's heart pounds. Boo, you okay? What is it? I can't really hear you, but, but I'm here, okay? I'm here, and everything's... You're... not... real. He whispers, voice cracked and horribly strained, sounding like he's screamed himself hoarse. Queens, he probably has. They snapped his horn off. Not a clean break. How much blood has he lost? And Tubbo insists tremulously. Yes, I, I am. I I'm real, boo. I'm here. I, I came to get you. Rambu wheezes out something that might have been a laugh at one point. Eyes slipping closed as he sighs. Mm, that's how I know you're... You're not real. Guess he'd never come back from me. He... Hates me. 
It feels like he's been shot through the gut. Had his wings torn from his back or antennas stripped from his head? Such an intense pain that kills his ability to breathe or think or do anything besides sit there in horror and feel like he's dying. And Rambu wheezes. See? See? Can't argue. No, it's... No, it's true. No, no! Tebo blurts out, desperate to make him understand. But he's cut off by Rambu slurring in a mocking tone. Yes, yes! Can't blame him, though. Waste of time and space. No use coming back for nothing. Shadow on the wall. Not even there. Doesn't matter. Never did. They did that to him. And now so have you. And Tebo lurches forwards, cradling Rambu's limp head in his hands, fingers spreading out under his long ears. Fuck! No. No, Boo! You're not nothing, okay? Queens, damn it, you're not! You mean so much to me, and I can't... You have no idea... Liar. Rambu hushes in sing-song, broken little giggles slipping out of his mouth, as his unfocused eyes drag slowly from left to right, like he's reading something. Not true. I've always been nothing, and always will be. A mistake. An accident. Go take that long walk. Zip. Right over the edge. No teleporting back up this time. Tebo can't speak, throat constricted tight with panic and agony. Over the edge, what does he mean? Surely he hasn't. And Rambu just laughs, unfocused eyes drifting past Tebo's shoulder as his head lulls forwards. You know? They took me thinking they were going to get the payout of a lifetime. But they didn't even get the spare. They got less than that. They got nothing. <laughs> Sorry for the disappointment. Sorry for the inconvenience. Never would have sent anyone. Nobody cares. I do! Tebo interrupts frantically, thumbs caressing under his eyes in jerky sweeps, turning Rambu's hollow, unseeing gaze back to him. I do! I'm here, Rambu! I, I came to find you! For a split second... His eyes seem to focus, but something dark shudders over them, like a shadow passing across the earth. No, you're not real. You're not. You're not. You're not. You hate me. T terrible person. Waste of space. I'm alone. Always been alone. Gonna die alone. Slip out of existence, finally. Good riddance. Stop! Tebo sobs, falling forwards and tugging him into an embrace, one set of arms around his waist, other around his shoulders, hands firmly cupping the back of his neck as Tebo brings their foreheads together. Queen, stop, please. Fucking hell, I'm so sorry. I should never have said those things. I don't hate you, Boone. Never have. Please believe me. I think I... I think I... He's really just the worst, Toms. You, you can't even begin to imagine. Rambu says in an odd tone, and Tebo stops short, because it almost sounds like... But n no, he's wrong. There's not a chance. But then he keeps going. He's so spoiled, thinks everything should just be fucking handed to him. Can't shut the fuck up about himself, it's insane. And Tebo realizes with dawning horror that Rambu's doing a scarily accurate impression of him, is reciting a conversation Tubbo's almost completely forgotten about, but he's remembering it now. How angry he was. How much he didn't understand. Didn't think Rambu overheard, but he's nailing it beat for beat. He's so rude. Queen's past. He, like, bitched me out the first time we met. Fuck. Queens, I just hate him so much. Like it's so bad. R Rambu? Tebo chokes out, 
but he's apparently not done. Voice pitching up, and bleeding sharp with anger and fire that Tebo's never heard from him. Feels hot tears pour out of his eyes. You don't know fucking anything! All that reading's for nothing! You don't know shit! You're fucking Ender! Terrible fucking people! I was wrong. I wish I'd never met you. What have you done? What have you done? And Tebo squeezes his eyes shut. Knows what's coming. Miserable sobs, making his back heave as Rambu says, with vicious finality. Should have just let Aku shoot me and save yourself the fucking trouble. Sorry for the colossal inconvenience, your highness. The silence that crashes over the two of them is devastating. Tebo doing nothing to muffle his heart broken crying. And it's the worst thing in the world when he hears Ronbu whisper in his regular voice, Told you. I can't forget anything. What you said is going to live in his head for the rest of his life, lined up with everyone else that's ever heard him. You thought you were different. Were better. Weren't like that, but look at what you've done. And Tubbo wails, thudding his head down onto Rambu's shoulder, clutching at him now because he doesn't know what else to do. Nasty, all-consuming despair engulfing his entire body, rotting out what was left in his mind that was keeping him upright. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Tubbo yells, great hiccuping sobs tearing from his throat, pain racing out from his chest and down his arms, pooling in his fingertips until they ache. Fuck. I'm so sorry. I never should have... never should have said any of that. It wasn't true. None of it was true. Y you mean everything to me. Please believe me. Please. Queens, please. And it's whisper quiet, but it cracks like gunfire in Tubbo's mind. I don't. He screams, ragged and desperate, Hands dropping off Rambu to clutch and claw at himself. Arms wrapping tight around his chest because it feels like his ribs are cracking open. Pouring out accelerant and fuel like an endless river. Feeding the fire that burns over every inch of his mind. Destroying everything it comes into contact with. What have you done? How could you do this to him? This is it. It's over. Reap what you sow. What are you going to do without him? Need him. Can't do this alone. Fix it. Fix it. Fix it. His mind howls frantically. Snide little voice whispering, Some things can't be fixed. You know that. And Tebo coughs hard around a staggering inhale. But I have to try. Engineer. Know how to fix things. Have to try. Queens. No. Fuck. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Fuck. I know you don't... I I know I messed up, but is, is there anything I can do? P please, Rambu, please. Tubbo begs, eyes itching and burning with the tears rolling out of them. Taste of salt heavy in his mouth, heart almost squeezing itself out of existence as Rambu hesitates, unsure eyes dragging slowly across the floor. Sniffing hard to clear his throat, Tebo tries to rein some of his desperation in, because this is Rambu's call, and he more than deserves that respect. You d don't have to forgive me. I just... I just want you t to believe me when I say I didn't mean it. That you're not nothing. That you mean so much to me. Is there anything I can do? Would you give me that chance? Dark tongue poking out to wet his lip. Rambu rocks his head back and forth, sluggishly, mumbling. I... maybe... I don't know. I... It's not a no. And Tubbo latches onto it frantically, like it's a lifeline and he's drowning. Jerks his head down and tries to meet Rambu's wandering gaze. 
that's okay, Boo. That's totally fine. All I'm asking for is is a chance, please. I know I have no right, but please. One of Rambu's ears flick. Eyes stopping their slow roving and hesitantly lift to meet Tubbo's. Something like recognition in them, as he whispers. You're really here? Yes, Tubbo says quickly, uncoils one set of arms and reaches out cautiously for his hands where they sit limp in his lap. Doesn't try taking them, just touches their fingers together. I'm real. I'm here. I came back. I'm here. I really am, Boo. I came as soon as I could. I'm so sorry. It took so long. I'm so sorry they hurt you. Ranbu is still looking at him a little unfocused, a little unsure. But his fingers twitch against Tubbo's, and it's encouragement enough for him to keep going. Let's everything that's eating him up inside pour out. Fuck, I, I never should have said what I did. Either time. I never wanted to hurt you. Please, please believe me. And it kills me that I have. Fucking hell. I don't want to be like them, Rambu. I really don't. A wet laugh trips out of his mouth, and Tebo shakes his head, smiling sadly at where their hands are barely touching. Remembers every time they've been laced together. I want to throw birthday parties for you. Want to be there when you need me. Just listen to you and tell you how smart you are. I want to keep flying with you. And playing tag on all of the stupid crap we've been getting up to. I want to make you laugh. Tebo hesitates the briefest second. Knows he'll be putting his heart on the line, but it's worth it. Rambu's worth everything. And he hushes softly. I want to make you happy. To give you a home. A real one. Some place you feel safe and loved. You mean more than the whole galaxy to me, and I... Are you lying? Rambu stammers, sounding absolutely terrified. And Tebo snaps his head up, stares into eyes that are suddenly very clear and very focused. Prays he's not imagining the way they shine with desperate hope. And says, with as much conviction as he can, No. I mean every word, Rambu. I'm never going to hurt you like that ever again. I swear on my life. Rambu doesn't move for a minute. But then his throat jumps as he swallows hard a few times. Brows knitting together. Faint clicking starting up as he sniffs. And then his entire face crumples and he pitches forwards with a wail. Hands scrabbling desperately at Tubbo's back while he sobs. Tubbo? Tubbo? I'm here. I'm here. Tubbo says, dragging the two of them closer, hands moving across Rambu's heaving shoulders, cupping the back of his head and tucking him into the crook of his neck. Sickly sweet, metallic tang of his blood everywhere. Can't stop his own tears, as he promises. I'm never leaving you again. An excerpt from the Declassified Galactic Survival Guide Existence is difficult. There's really no other way around it. And many try and dress it up and play it off like it's not. Surround themselves with wealth and luxuries. Try to find purpose through power and standing tall. But it's all just a thin film covering up the gnawing dread that fills every living thing cursed with sentience. That doesn't mean life can't be enjoyable. That there aren't things worthwhile to seek out and pursue, but it's in the approach where it changes. Either becomes more fulfilling, or just spirals you further down into the black pit of existential moo that lives within us all. Your author doesn't claim to have all the answers. And as per my legal team's recommendations, has been advised to tell you that I have none of the answers. But it is of my firm, personal belief that the easiest way to garner enjoyment and a sense of satisfaction is to partake in a concept that children are quick to conform to 
and adults are quick to forget. Everything about life is meant to be shared, from the wealth and the prosperity and the power to all the things in between, all the sorrows and hardships, the uplifting moments that sing in your skin for days and the love that rushes strong and alive in your veins. This guide was not only created with the intention of helping the reader navigate the cosmos, but also to provide you with a better understanding of peoples and cultures heretofore unknown to you, and maybe provide some understanding and compassion for your fellow beings, to foster relationships that grow new points of communication. It may be the ideals of a dreamer but your author sincerely hopes that this work has somehow managed to bring this massive, convoluted clusterfuck of a galaxy we call home a little closer. That this guide has helped erase some of the imaginary lines we draw in the sand. Because at the end of everything, all we really have is each other. And that has to count for something. The last box is lifted out of the cargo hold, and Tebo just stands there, dumbly staring at the empty space, uncomfortable with how much room is down here now. Here is a throat being cleared, and swings his head up. Rambu standing at the edge of where the cargo ramp starts, gold earrings and circlet winking in the light that spills in from the open hatch, hands knotted together in front of him as he darts his eyes away fast. Remember when he used to look you in the eyes? No problem. But that was before you ruined everything. Shut up. Not the time. That all of it? Tebo forces himself to ask, going for banal and normal. Thinks he lands closer to something like being strangled alive. And Rambu nods his head jerkily, earrings swinging back and forth, one, two, one, two, boots out in the courtyard. I... yeah. Good. That's, um... That's good. Tebo says, from what feels like underwater, stuffs his hands in the pockets of his bomber and rocks up on his toes. So you, um, you double-checked everything up top and... Yep. Yeah, um, yeah, I got everything. Rambu twitches his hands together and apart, and it descends into an uncomfortable silence, neither one of them meeting the other's eyes pressure mounting up and dragging inwards, crushing collapse of a dying star. And Tabo swallows thickly. So, this is it then, huh? Please say no. Please stay. Please come up to the cockpit with me. Please don't leave. I... yeah. And Tabo flicks his eyes closed for a second. What did you expect? It's for the best. He's better off here. Sighs hard through his nose and blinks the forming tears away. Smiles crooked and unreassuringly. But it's all he can manage. Well, it's been... It's been a wild ride, Boo. Rambu does something complicated with his face. Ducks his head at a funny angle, still getting used to the new, uneven weight. And the shorn-off horn looks a little better after Tubbo cleaned it up, shaved down some of the sharper bits, but it's never growing back. He's going to have that for the rest of his life. A horrible memento from a frankly insane intergalactic trip that was only supposed to take 36 hours, but has now lasted the better part of a month. Fuck, it hasn't even been a month. Tubbo thinks, in mounting dread. Eyes losing focus as he realizes how much life is going to suck for the foreseeable future. You decided you can't do this without him after less than a month. What in the fuck are you going to do now? Keep going. The part of his head that sounds like techno, like his mother, chimes in with, and he wants to be able to snort and brush it off, chalk it up to melodrama, move on. But Tebo doesn't think he can this time. He's not the same person that took off for Anwal all those weeks ago. And it's abysmally sobering to have to go from thinking in terms of we and us to me and I again. He's not sure how long he's going to be able to keep it up, but who in the world would he ever find to replace Ronbu? Because there's no one. 
One in a million. Absolutely incredible. And you ruined it. You broke whatever you could have had. Shuffling around awkwardly on his feet, Rambu seems to come to some decision and crosses the cargo hold in a few long strides, unexpectedly grabs Tubbo around the shoulders and hauls him into a bruising hug. He dips his head down and buries his nose in Tubbo's hair, whispering warm and shaky. Thank you for everything, Bo. I mean it. Fuck you. Can't sound like that. That's not fair. Why won't you stay? Just ask. Please. I can't. Please ask. I'd say yes. Of course. Tebo answers, just as uneven, burrowing his face into Rambu's collarbones, into the scratchy material of one of his fancy tunics, missing the soft feel of his nightshirts turned day shirts. Being swamped with Rambu like this does horrible things to his composure, and Tubbo tries not to sniffle, obviously, hanging on to him with a kind of desperation he shouldn't have. Please don't leave. Can't do this without you. Need you. Never thought I'd be here, but please just stay. And then, too soon and too fast, and queens don't, Rambu drops his arms, taking that first step back, the one that'll take him out of the Asachi and Tubbo's life, and... and Tubbo just has to let him go. Well, um, safe travels. Rambu murmurs, edging backwards like he doesn't want to go. But if he wanted to stay, he would. He knows how you feel. This is his choice. Can't stop him. And Tubbo laughs tremulously, Shrugs his shoulders and hopes it doesn't look like he's about to cry. Unlikely, but I'll try. Good luck in school. Thanks. Rambu says with his own unsure smile. Finally turns on his heel with one last little wave, and then he's stepping down the cargo ramp, out into the main terminal of Nerox's intergalactic port. And it feels like a part of Tubbo rips itself off to go with him. One of his hands comes up and twists harshly into the shirt over where his heart rests, pulse rapid-fire fast and unsteady, like he really is missing a chunk of something important. This is the best thing for him, Tubbo reminds himself, over and over again, but he's unable to move from his spot, staring helplessly after where Rambu disappeared into the afternoon light. Not much talking happened after they split off from Dream and the others on Jiayuet. Just exhausted silence and bleary relief. Tubbo half awake, keeping an eye on the autopilot with one of his arms strung out over the gap in their seats, fingers threaded through Rambu's. Things were complicated between them after the fight, after all of the things Tubbo said, and Rambu had been willing to give him another chance, but it wasn't like everything was magically fixed now. There was still tension, an undercurrent of mistrust whenever Rambu looked at him or moved past, and Tubbo knew that wasn't changing overnight. He felt like the best thing to do was to give Rambu some space, because in between what he said and the trauma of the kidnapping, this trip probably hadn't done many favors for him mentally, and he didn't need that kind of shit in his life. So that's why Tubbo kept his damn mouth shut for once after they landed watching Rambu shuffle all of his things back together without a word. Figured it was obvious how he felt, what he wanted, was leaving it open for Rambu to make whatever decision he felt was best for him. And Tubbo didn't like admitting it. Made him feel selfish and egotistical, but that wasn't the only reason he didn't bring anything up. He was afraid of Rambu's response. Scared of being told no again over half-packed luggage, was also getting hopelessly tangled up in what it meant that he was willing to ask, sick with himself because it felt like he was betraying Tommy, abandoning him and everything they had. Queens, Tubbo's got to stop thinking about this. It's over. It's done. And he needs to get going before any local law enforcement shows up and starts getting frisky. The port is bustling with traffic, and the enforcers do come by and check papers every now and then. 
so Tubbo really needs to head back up to the cockpit, begin the takeoff process now that, now that the mission is officially over. It hits like a blow to the back of the head. The fact that this is it. That he's going to have to go back up to the cockpit alone. Drop into a seat and know that Rambu's not going to be sitting down in his across the way. Eyes wicked bright and smile sharp as he takes the trigger in his space dark hands. And a few wayward tears slide quietly down his cheeks. How is Tubbo supposed to do anything now? Just go back to HQ like nothing's happened? Like he hasn't had his entire life unceremoniously flipped on its head? This absolute clusterfuck of a mission is going to be at the back of his every waking thought for the rest of his life. Like he's haunted. Nothing he can do to escape the knowledge that he's lost another partner. You don't know that. You never asked. You need to ask. Can't know unless you try. But he can't. Promised Tommy long ago that there'd never be anyone else. Couldn't put Rambu through more crap that he doesn't deserve. You idiot. Do you think Tommy'd want that for you? Do you think Rambu can't make his own decisions? No, but it's complicated and he's scared, okay? Scared of letting go and moving on. Doesn't want to leave Tommy like he's nothing. Moving on isn't bad. It doesn't mean you're leaving him. Doesn't mean you love him any less. Go ask. He can't. Doesn't know how. And Rambu's gone anyway. Doesn't want this anyway. So there's no point and... He might need to know he's wanted. And since when have you ever been afraid of a chase? His feet stutter where he's standing. Pulse a roaring crescendo in his ears as he tries to decide what to do. Wings flickering behind him erratically. And he knows he's the only one here. But Tubbo swears he feels fingers pressing lightly in between his shoulder blades. Nudging him forwards while an affectionately irritated voice huffs. Go on, you idiot, I don't mind. And Tubbo's gone, boots pushing off sharply and propelling him forwards, down the cargo ramp and out into the blinding afternoon sunlight. The port is incredibly crowded this time of day, other travelers milling about, and Tubbo weaves through them fast, trying to catch a glimpse of night-dark hair and long sweep of a horn finally spots the trailing end of a fuzzy tail through a break in the crowd, cups two hands around his mouth, and shouts, Rambu! Rambu whirls around immediately, shock clear on his face as Tubbo dashes up to his side, mouth already dropping open in question, but Tubbo beats him to it. Come with me. I... what? C come with me. Back to HQ. Join the syndicate, he says quickly. Feels a little like he's going to throw up. Adrenaline shooting through his veins fast. Only ever asked this once before, and it nearly wrecked him. But Tubbo can't think about that. Finally spits out what's been burning holes into his brain for weeks now. Be my partner. Come fly with me. Just, you can stay. If you want. In his mind... How it goes is something like this. Rambu stares at him like he's grown five heads, but that real, genuine smile Tubbo's come to adore stretches his mouth wide, scrunching his eyes up as he excitedly agrees, stumbling forwards to wrap their hands together, cool weight of his tail settling around Tubbo's waist, dragging him closer so he can lean up and trail his antenna across Rambu's horn, and everything is perfect and good and better than okay. But in reality, it goes a little something like this. Rambu stares at him blankly, but his face eventually twitches, brows scrunching together over conflicted eyes, mouth pushed to the side like he's uncomfortable and doesn't know what to say. And that's never been the case before. Rambu always knows what to say. And Tebo feels like he's sinking through the earth. He fucked up. Gotta hear him say it now. Idiot. Moron, what were you thinking? Despair clawing up his throat like a demon possessed. I 
don't. Rambu starts, and Tubbo can't listen to him say it. I don't want to. Can't. I'm so sorry. Nothing personal. I just can't go with you. Rushes out fast and a little insane sounding. Wishes he'd stayed on his ship where he belongs. You don't have to answer. Um, yeah, just think about it, I guess. I, I um, I'll be here for another few hours if, you know, you decide or whatever. Yeah, okay. Tubbo doesn't wait for an answer. Turns and bolts back into the crowd. Sticky, hot prickle of embarrassment rolling down his spine and agitating his wings. It's harder finding space now between the throng of bodies, because he's got half of his attention straining to hear familiar footfalls at his back like an idiot. But there's nothing, and Tubbo thinks he might throw up. What was he thinking? What was he thinking? What possessed him to do that? How much of a fucking idiot is he, really? Tubbo clasps a set of hands on the back of his neck as he stumbles unseeing through the late afternoon crowd. Fingers digging in harshly while he mentally kicks himself back and forth. Idiot. Moron. What were you thinking? He doesn't want to go with you. Fuck up. Reject. Just projecting. Should have stayed on the ship. Know your place, drone. Nobody ever goes with you. Keep waiting on people that have already left. Tomo! He whirls around hearing his name. Hope surging bright in his chest registering a second later that that kind of ear-splitting volume couldn't possibly be Ronbu. And resignation threatens to swallow him whole. But then the crowd parts, and standing there impossibly in a crisp blue and red uniform, wings fluffed out behind him and disbelief etched onto his face, is... Tommy. Tubbo breathes out, everything winking out of existence for a second, before it comes crashing back in full force. He's here. He's real. How? Why? Can't believe it. Feet stumbling as he tries to move fast enough. Pushing through the throng of people like a madman. Doesn't stop until a body hits his way too hard. Nearly taking them both over. But Tubbo throws a foot out to steady them. There are hands everywhere. Tubbo's fumbling around desperately at the starched material of Tommy's uniform jacket. Fingers burying themselves in soft feathers, and Tommy's dig in sharp over his wings, arms wrapped possessively around his back, pulling Tubbo closer, engulfing them both in his wingspan, keeping the outside world muffled and far away. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Tommy stammering, pressing his cheek into the top of Tubbo's head, squishing his antenna a little in the process. But Tubbo couldn't care less. Wiggles closer and just breathes in, finally remembering with aching clarity what Tommy smells like. Clean laundry and engine oil and fruity shampoo and love and late nights studying and home. How are you here? Why? I, I don't... Fuck, I haven't gone insane, have I? That'd be really fucking annoying. I just... Holy shit. Tubbo, you're... You're actually here, you're real. Tommy says around high-pitched, anxious laughter. Sniffles hard and disgustingly wipes his nose in Tubbo's hair. Huck, I never thought I'd see you again, B-boy. Queens, Tommy, I'm sorry, so, so sorry. Tubbo mumbles into the warm space between his neck and shoulder, tears of his own leaking out as his fists tighten in the material of Tommy's jacket. Fucking shit. I never wanted to make you worry like that. And I, and I, queens of ages past, I'm so sorry. Forgive you, you little shit. Tommy mutters right up next to his antenna. The timbre of his voice rumbling so close it makes all of his hair stand on end. And when Tommy laughs, it feels like the air's been stolen out of his lungs. You're really the luckiest son of a bitch in the whole galaxy, mark my words, Tubbs. Fucking hell. Love you. Love you so much. Oi, in it! Get your stupid ass back here by the creators. Oh, fucking what, Manifold? Tommy snaps bolts right up and screams. 
has the decency to spin away from Tubbo as he raises his voice to truly concerning levels. And it gives Tubbo a second to regain his composure before he absolutely loses it in the middle of the port. He takes a few steadying breaths, one hand still firmly buried in Tommy's wing, fingers absent-mindedly tracing along feathers while he drags a sleeve across his eyes, Tommy continuing his shouting match in the background. Do not fucking test me right now, bitch, or I'll put your ass in a photon cannon for real this time. Point that shiny head of yours at enemy lines and... Oh, eat a snorfoya dick sack. You can't go fucking running off. We haven't debriefed yet, you moron. If this is what I get for looking out for your dumb ass, the fuck are you doing anyway? Jack's grumbling gets clearer the closer he gets. And in the interest of preserving everyone else's eardrums, Tebo finally steps out from behind Tommy, sheepishly waving at a gobsmacked Jack. Hey, Jack. How's it, uh, how's it going? Holy shit. You're not dead? Before Tebo can answer, there's an arm slung around his shoulders and he's drug into Tommy's side. Hears him huff out indignantly. Somehow, despite his continuing efforts to do otherwise. Well, fuck me. Glad you're all right, man. Jack says, a bit awkwardly. Doesn't nervously fidget or anything like that, because he's a good cadet and knows better. Didn't drop out and join a terrorist organization. Isn't responsible for burning a shipyard down. There's very few people Tubbo's kept up with from the Academy. Well, none, actually, besides Tommy. And he's excruciatingly reminded of why that is watching Jack flick his eyes around, scanning the crowd, looking for their CO, anyone that could rat on him for speaking to a wanted felon. Tebo knows, logically, it's nothing personal. Jack doesn't hate him, and he isn't a bad person for trying to cover their asses. But it's one of the reasons he loathes Sunfleet so much. They put such an emphasis on always doing what you're told or not thinking and just following orders that it leaves all of them unable to make honest judgment calls, simply getting swept up in the imperial dogma. It's a fear that's loomed over every conversation he's had with Tommy since the incident, that one day he'd get in too far, and Tommy wouldn't be able to get back out of it, would look at Tubbo the way Jack does, the way the rest of them do, with pity, with a little bit of disgust, Fear and suspicion haunting the corners of their eyes. Well, it's good seeing you under- uh, I mean, uh, Tobo. But we should probably get going. Jack says, turning to look at Tommy imploringly from under the brim of his hat, the not-so-subtle head jerk he's doing to try and convey to him that they need to leave. It's nothing personal. You know how much shit they'd catch. Sit down. Shut up. Know your place. Tebo thinks, bitterly, curling his stinging fingers hard into fists, the movement pulling at the tender scabs over his knuckles as he goes to duck out from under Tommy's arm, before he can move it himself. But his grip tightens, refusing to let Tebo go. Nah, me and Tubbo have got some catching up to do, so I'll catch you later, Manifold. Tommy says, nonchalantly, shoots a gaping Tubbo a quick wink out of the corner of his eye as Jack sputters. What? You can't do that. Commander Jew's orders would just cover for me. Tell Sio I'm shitting my brains out and had to go to medical again. Thanks, Manifold, you're a real pal. Tommy flicks Jack a lazy salute and pulls at Tubbo, ignoring his roommate's protests as he drags them both out of the port. Keeps an arm firmly around Tubbo's shoulders, despite that going against the code of conduct for dress blues. Tommy, don't be stupid. Tubbo starts, but gets bowled over by Tommy loudly interrupting him, using that particular tone of voice that means he's decided to do something and no one can stop him. There's this new tea shop that's open since you've been gone, and you've got to try it. They put these little, like, jelly balls in the tea and it's real fucking good. The intergalactic port lets out into Nerox's capital, Mahari, and it's just as stunning as Tubbo remembers it. All sleek, lined buildings chiseled out of a pale stone, aged green metal roofs reflecting dully in the bright afternoon light, 
and peppered here and there are people in the bright blue uniforms of the enforcers. Tubbo tips his head to the side quickly when they pass a patrolling duo, heart loud in his ears and uncomfortable heat prickling under his collar, very, very aware of the jacket he's wearing, and whispers harshly to Tommy, I can't be here, Toms. I still, um, you know, there's still warrants, and, and no one will mess with you, man, not while I'm here. They got a problem, I'll deal with it. And I outrank them now anyway, so... Tommy declares loftily, and Tubbo's about to argue with him out of habit because no, he does not. When Tommy holds up an arm, new set of gold bands flashing around the sleeve of his jacket. You made lieutenant? Tebo asks incredulously. Didn't think Tommy was going to climb up the ranks. Thought he was getting his degree and getting out. It's been three rotations. A lot can change. Maybe they finally got him. One, two, one, two. Boots out in the courtyard. Sit down. Shut up. What does that mean for you, Worker B? Fear spikes through him, watching Tommy swing his arm up and tip his hat at a group of tittering girls. But Tebo tries to snuff it out because this is Tommy. He knows him, knows he's not like that. Tries to find comfort in the self-satisfied smirk on Tommy's face, an expression that softens into something a little more hesitant when he looks down at Tubbo. Yeah, I, um, kind of threw myself into things when, uh, when I thought you were, you know. He doesn't bother finishing, just shrugs helplessly, and Tebo lets out a shaky breath. It's still him. It's okay. Not one of hundreds. He's still himself. Still your friend. Your brother. Calm down. Just calm down. Tips his head to rest on Tommy's shoulder, right arms looping behind his back under his wings, pulling them closer until they almost stumble while they walk. The tea shop is close to the port, something cute and small, and probably very trendy in Mahari these days and it's filled to the brim with other cadets and officers, some calling out to Tommy while they make their way up to the counter. And he waves at them, but doesn't leave Tubbo's side, despite the looks that get thrown their way. Quick, quiet hush of Svuka, spreading around the shop. Tubbo ducks down into his collar and shakes his hair across his eyes. Anything so he doesn't have to see all the dirty glances thrown his way and it's a small mercy that none of them are pointed, no one in here recognizing him, just the color of his jacket and the emblems on his shoulders, relaxes when Tommy casually drapes a wing around him. This entire time, Tommy's been almost frantic to keep one point of contact between them, leaves a hand draped over Tubbo's shoulder while he points out the things he likes on the menu, nudges him forwards in line with gentle prodding from his fingers, pokes, and teases and slaps at him in a blatant excuse to not break that contact. And Tubbo revels at it, musses up and then straightens Tommy's feathers over and over again, almost forgot the feeling of them under his fingers, kicks at him amicably in line, mindful not to scuff his dress shoes, and stares at how mismatched their footwear is. His nasty, worn-to-shit combat boots and the sleek, black shine of Tommy's loafers grabs at his hands and punches his arm and stands as close as he can get. It's been over three rotations since they've seen each other like this, but it might as well have been no time at all. And they fall back together so easily, Tubbo almost forgets they've been separated for so long. Tommy gets them rolling on a series of terrible ball-related jokes that has them both wheezing like crazy people when it's their turn to order. But the person behind the counter doesn't bat an eye, doesn't ask for Tommy's name either, so they must be used to it by now. Gets them their drinks in record time. Come on. Tommy prompts when they leave the shop, and the only warning Tubbo gets before he spreads his wings is a shit-eating grin. Stumbles back at the massive gust of air Tommy kicks up when he takes off. Tubbo snaps his wings open with an indignant shout, and follows after, zipping along behind Tommy's incessant cackling as he makes for a nearby building. Lands a lot more elegantly than Tommy does. All huge, loud backpedaling of wings. Are we supposed to be up here? Tubbo asks cautiously as Tommy flops down, 
legs dangling precariously over the side, and straw poked in his mouth. He shrugs, takes a long, noisy sip of his tea, and mumbles around what's in his mouth. Since when have you cared about rules? Tavo snorts, and acts like he's going to kick him over the side as he takes a seat next to him, shoulders bumping as he sips at his own tea, grinning around the straw when he feels the warm weight of a wing drape around his back. You owe me quite the story, bitch. Tommy demands after he's swallowed his mouthful, arching an eyebrow at him, and Tubbo supposes he does. But so much has happened since the last time they spoke, since Tubbo messaged him, and he's a little nervous, voicing any of it. It's kinda a long story. He mutters hesitantly, naively hoping that'll deter Tommy from asking again, that maybe he'll realize he needs to get going, and Tubbo won't have to explain about binary sun eyes and space dark hands, and he wouldn't go with me. But ever one to be contrary, Tommy shrugs and rattles his drink around. It's okay, I got plenty of balls to get through. I just, if you're sure, I know you probably have um, things you need to be, Tubbo. I have not seen you in over three rotations. Tommy cuts him off with sharply blue eyes. Intense and serious, like they only ever get when he's looking over maps and his instruments. And he reaches out, wraps one of his hands around one of Tubbo's. I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. Still the same bullheaded as always. You know him. Could never forget him. Loyal to his core. It's okay. Just tell him. Okay. Tubbo whispers turning his hand over and lacing their fingers together, and just starts at the beginning. He talks briefly about the panic of Osiren, glosses over his shit repair job on the Asachi, and falling sick on Immuna, starts to stumble after that, because things get increasingly more complicated, and increasingly closer to the thing he doesn't want to think about, leaves his story riddled with holes and trailing off in unsure tones, Fuck, this is so much harder than he thought. And Tubbo's taking a much-needed break to drink his tea, mind scrambled but finally settling now that he thinks he's done. And then Tommy just has to ask, What about the guy? That asshole you were flying? Did you leave his buddy on job whatever or something? Blaster pointed at his head, black blood splattering across walls, dripping down the front of his shirt. Not real. Never to come back for me. And Tubbo chokes on his drink, shooting a few of those jellied balls out of his mouth when Tommy whacks him hard on the back, exclaiming, Holy shit, you good? Y yeah. Tubbo coughs, wiping leftover tea off his chin, but he must not sound convincing enough, because Tommy's brows furrow, and he leans in, ramming their shoulders together, voice soft and coaxing. Hey, you know you can tell me anything, right? Can I? Should I? Need to bury it, not think about it. Hesitant eyes and pinched face. Of course he'd never go with you. All for nothing, and I promised you. Tubbo thinks in a rush, worrying his lip with his teeth, and panic starts to ease up his throat, cinching tight around his neck. Feels like he's trapped. He should go. Get off this damn planet and leave everything behind. Could you do it? Could you leave him? Fly off without those eyes looking at you from across the cockpit? And that freezing hand in yours, tail wrapped around your waist, and laugh echoing in all the dark corners. And a shaky sob escapes his mouth because he can't, and he doesn't know what to do. Oh, fuck, Tommy... I messed up. I really, really messed up, and I... Breathe, Tubbo. Just, it's gonna be okay. I'm here, we'll get it sorted. Tommy says with no hesitation, doesn't ask for any more details, but is already on Tubbo's side, 100%. And he's always been like that, Tubbo realizes. Has always made his own judgment calls. Even right at the start, back when they first started training... He was the only one that had sit next to Tubbo in the mess, 
didn't dump his tray on the floor and actually talked to him, without all of the condescension every other recruit gave him, asked about his home in honest friendliness, never made him feel bad about where he came from. He volunteered to be Tubbo's roommate immediately, would help him up from training mats like he was the same as the rest of them, four arms and all, never once treated him like he was second-rate, like he didn't deserve to be there, and he stayed with him even after the news story broke, when Tubbo's mugshot was plastered all over billboards, took his tear-filled explanation at face value and never doubted him for a second. Tommy has always been there for him, has loved and trusted him through everything, and it feels like the biggest betrayal to admit to what's hanging on the tip of his tongue. I found someone. I found someone new. A new friend. A new partner. A co-pilot. And maybe it's because it's been so long since they've been together. Has Tubbo emotionally compromised and more unsteady than usual? But Tommy squeezes his hand once, and it comes tumbling out involuntarily. It's all of it this time the truth. Every single thing he's kept bottled up for almost a month now. And Tommy's eyes blow wide, listening to Tubbo talk about Rombu. His Rombu, his gunner, his partner. But instead of anger, instead of anything nasty and hateful and betrayed like Tubbo thinks, he actually starts to smile. Tommy's still grinning, actually. Real and hopeful and so deliriously happy when Tubbo gets to explaining what he asked, how Rombu responded, or didn't, more accurately, flexes the wing around Tubbo and ruffles his hair, says warm and incredibly tender, Dude, I am so happy for you. He didn't say yes, Tommy. Tubbo reminds him, glumly, fiddling with his straw now that his tea is empty, stares out over the setting sun, burnishing the buildings around them, and wonders if Rambu is done unpacking yet, if he's already forgetting about Tubbo. I'm never going to forget you, going to be with me the rest of my life. Huck, how am I going to do this? Thoughts cutting off sharply, though, as Tommy scoffs and whaps his wing into Tubbo's back. You didn't give him a chance. Look, I don't know the guy, but from what you described, he's twitchy as shit, man. Tubbo hangs his head because Tommy's right. He doesn't know Rambu, but Tubbo does. Knew without a shadow of a doubt what that look on his face meant. Sorry, but I don't think so. Thanks, but no thanks. And he presses a hand over where his heart rests, deep-seated pain radiating out from the spot. Fuck. He does not want to talk about this right now. It's still too fresh, too new, like a wound that hasn't even had a chance to start healing. But Tommy's been pressuring him for rotations about getting a partner. And like a dog with a bone, he's refusing to drop it. You gotta give him time. Let him think and sort through it, but I bet every credit in my account he's waiting for you back at the Asachi. Tommy says confidently. And it feels like Tebo's heart is ripping in two. No, he's not. No, he's not. Didn't see his eyes. Didn't see his face. Sorry, nothing personal and he grits his teeth as Tommy tips his head back and dumps the rest of his ice in his mouth, crunching through it loudly. He'll go with you, Tubbo. I guarantee it. He'd be an idiot not to. Something about the way Tommy says it. Sure and even. Like it's a given. Like anyone would want to go with Tubbo when he wouldn't. Has furious tears pricking in his eyes. All of the shaky, howling feelings he's kept a lid on for rotations rolling to the surface. And he whispers, thickly. You wouldn't. I... What? You wouldn't go with me. Three rotations ago. Tebo seethes. Tips his head to the side and glares at Tommy. Some of his anger billowing away at the hurt look on his face. The guilt that's dragging his usual happy eyes down and regret washes in like a choking flood of gasoline. Always like this. Ruin everything you touch, hurt the people you love, just wish yourself out of existence. I get it, okay? Why would you ever want to go somewhere with me? 
you've got a life here, have an actual future with promise, and I'm just a, a nobody. Tubbo spits, sitting up fast and edging away from Tommy, pressing two hands into his eyes to try and staunch the tears. And it's the same for him, okay? He's so smart, Tommy. He's gonna go so far, and it's not with me. I'm a fuck-up. I'd only drag him down, so it makes sense, okay? You don't need to say anything. I get it. Tubbo, I... It's, it's not what you think. I... Stop, okay? I... I get it. I understand. You, you don't have to explain. Apparently I do. Tommy snaps. And Tubbo peeks at him from between his fingers, color high on his cheeks and wings ruffling behind him like they only do when he's really agitated. And Tommy fixes him with a hard stare. Look, I stayed not because I don't want to go with you, but because I had to, okay? I can't do what I need to do if I'm not part of the Sunfleet Admiralty. Somehow it hurts worse this way. That he stayed for Sunfleet? To continue his career with Sunfleet? The imperialistic superpower that's basically enslaved Tubbo's planet. And countless more. Actual anger snarls to life in his chest. The same vicious, spitting thing that drug him right into Wilbur's clutches. And he looks at Tommy, absolutely betrayed. What's wrong with you? I always thought you weren't in it for the power. How can you support what they're doing? I don't! Tommy demands hotly, hand jerking out to the side in anger, and Tubbo swivels to face him, matching him pace for pace in volume and dangerous emotions. You want to be an admiral! The same fucking bastards that drive the fleet's decisions? Do you not know what they're doing out there? Or do you just not care? I'm not an idiot. Of course I know what's really happening. So you're just fucking okay with it then? How could you support this? How could you think what they do is okay? None of what the fleet does is okay. None of it. But that's why I stayed. Tommy yells, cutting him off with the sheer volume of his voice. Anger and frustration sparking in his eyes but they're completely overshadowed by the white-hot determination, burning like the strongest of stars. The fleet is absolutely fucked and out of line all the time. It's a fucking abomination, and that's why I've got to fix it. What? Tebo breathes, feeling untethered and very lost all of a sudden. And Tommy cocks his chin back. Nothing haughty about the gesture. Just brash, confidence, and a steel will. I'm gonna change everything, Tubbo. The fleet is a monster as it is, but it has such potential to be a real force for good. A peacekeeping force that actually helps people. And I'm gonna be the one to do it. Any other time, and Tubbo would chalk it up to Tommy's usual braggadocio. But he knows him, and he is dead serious. Chokes out in a strangled voice, are you insane? They're never going to let you do that. It's... To be an admiral, you have to play their game, Tommy. It's... You're not going to make it with those kind of ideals. Attitudes like that is why nothing's changed. Tommy says, evenly. And fuck. He's got that look on his face. Can't stop me now. Like to see you try. Get the fuck out of my way. And Tubbo starts to panic reaches out for his shoulders frantically and shakes him. Tommy, you're going to get yourself killed. And he grins, too wide and too bold, has clearly gone insane without Tubbo around to keep an eye on him, tips his head to the side and declares, I think I can take on a few stodgy old fucks, but thanks for the vote of confidence, Tubbs. Tommy, you stupid fuck. It's not just them. It's the Emperor... It's the secret police? He's not going to stand for- Emperors don't last forever. Tommy shrugs, nonchalantly, like he didn't just spout treason. But the cocky light starts to fade from his eyes at whatever expression Tubbo was making. Reaches a hand up to his shoulder and squeezes the one Tubbo has latched around him like a death grip. I'm not going to kill him, relax. He's just not going to live forever, and I know the air. We've talked a lot about- about the future. Eret's a good person, Tubbo. They share my ideals, so we're going to fix it, together. 
Tubba doesn't know what to say. For a second, is convinced he's not actually talking to Tomothy in it. Because this is heavy and real, and Tommy has never really cared for those kind of things. He's always had Tommy in his head to be his stupidly loyal, funny, caring best friend that struggled to take things seriously. But Tubbo's seeing him in a new light like this. He realizes then that the person he's thinking of has been frozen in time, a memory of someone that probably hasn't existed in a long while. And it's sobering to know that Tubbo's not the only one that's changed, that they've both grown up in ways he hasn't noticed in their rotations apart. I have to do this, Tubbo. That's why I couldn't go with you. Tommy hushes, smiling at him sadly, setting sun creating a halo of light around his head and turning his blonde curls a shining gold. I don't blame you for leaving. You had every right to. But if good people like you won't stay, nothing's ever going to change. It wasn't Tubbo. It, it wasn't Tubbo. Tommy stayed because of this insane dream of his, not because he didn't want to go. And Tubbo has to swallow a few times to clear his throat, frustrated that rotation's worth of self-hatred and doubting himself could have been avoided. Why didn't you tell me? I thought it'd make you feel guilty, like I was implying you were a bad person for leaving. I didn't want to hurt you, but I think I ended up doing it anyway. Tommy sighs, long and drawn out, shoulders slumping in defeat as he looks at him with glassy eyes. I'm really fucking sorry, Tubbo. And it doesn't make everything better instantly. Tubbo still feels like he's had the shit kicked out of him, brain scrambling to resort and reorganize everything it knew. And it's hard, trying to cram square pegs into round holes. But he thinks, maybe, he'll get the hang of it eventually. Relaxes his grip around Tommy's shoulders. Thank you for apologizing. I just wish you told me sooner. Tubbo murmurs. And isn't that the understatement of the century? But he didn't change what's happened. Tommy said what he did because he thought it was the right thing to do. Had no way of knowing how bad it had haunted Tubbo for rotations to come. And the only thing he can do now is decide how he wants to move forwards. But honestly, it's a really easy choice. And Tubbo uses the hands he has on Tommy to drag him forwards into a hug, tucking his face in the crook of his neck as he whispers thickly, I forgive you. Thank you. You know I love you, you bitch. Tommy mumbles into the top of Tubbo's head, pointy end of his nose squashed into one of his antennae, arms wrapped tight across his back, and Tubbo smiles a little, works his fingers through soft, gray-speckled wings. Love you too, dickhead. It's nice, being able to hug Tommy again, to hear his laughter and see the way his eyes crinkle when he smiles. But there's something missing. And Tubbo's really trying to figure out what that is when a hand runs across his back and there's no sharp prick of claws like he's expecting. His entire mind is flooded then with every single memory of holding Ronbu, the long, wiry shape of him fitting better in Tubbo's arms than anybody else ever has. And his hands tighten into fists, slack in a second later because what's done is done, and he's tired of agonizing over it. They head down not too long after that, because it really was getting late, and Tommy had to get back before his commander found him and killed him. And Tubbo had to get the fuck out of Dodge unless he wanted to spend the next however many years he had left rotting in a cold jail cell. Tommy drags him into one last hug right outside of the intergalactic port's gates, and Tubbo wraps his arms around him fiercely, trying to press everything about this moment into his mind for eternity. When I'm Admiral and Eret's on the throne, I'll clear your warrants, I promise. Tommy whispers thickly. And Queens, it hurts so much having to say goodbye again. Tubbo feels like he didn't get enough time. Doesn't know if there ever will be enough time. Sniffles and punches Tommy lightly on the arm. Oh wow, can't wait to be a free man in my sixties. 
Oh, ew, no. I'm making Admiral way before I'm, like, old. I'll be the sexiest commanding officer, just you wait, Tubbs. I'm gonna be dripping in women. Tubbo barks out a wet laugh. Tips his head up to see the moronic expression Tommy's making. Mouth pulled up in an ugly sneer and eyebrows waggling furiously. Snorts and shakes his head. Queens, you are just actually the worst. Jack deserves a medal of honor for putting up with your crap. <laughs> he'd probably agree with you. He's a good guy, though. Wonder if he'd come play revolutionary with me. He could be like my fun little sidekick. I could get him a unitard and everything. Tommy muses, rambling because he doesn't want to go, trying to stall for time. But they've got to. And Tubbo's the first one to step back this time, out of the shelter of Tommy's wings with a crooked smile. Yeah? Get him a hot pink sparkly one and send me pics. Rightio, boss man. Tommy flicks him a tremulous salute, edging back as well, towards the academy, towards gilded, whitewashed walls and the better future he wants to build. Leaves Tubbo standing at the gates that'll take him out to the black, endless void of the stars, to the freedom he's fought to win for himself. See you on the other side, Tubbo. See you there, Tommy. Tubbo says warmly, turns slowly with one last look over his shoulder, holds up two hands in farewell as Tommy does the same, opening his wings and taking off with a snap, disappearing into the wide, jeweled-colored skies of Nerox. Stuffing his hands in the pockets of his bomber, Tubbo heads back under the towering pillars that flank the front gate, skirts around shifty-looking enforcers, and keeps his face out of their line of sight as much as possible. The port's crowded, even this late in the day. It's Mahari. It's Nerox. Center of the Empire and all that. And Tubbo uses that to his advantage, ducking through large clumps of people with his head down. He watches the white marble of the floor pass under his scuffed-up boots, finally alone with his thoughts, which isn't as bad as he feared it would be. Nothing comes scrabbling for him out of the darkness, and it's nice having some peace and quiet for once. Seeing Tommy helped, soothed some of the anxiety and insecurities that had been wheezing out like the last noxious trails of smoke from an extinguishing fire. Enough so that when Tubbo does go back to HQ, he thinks he's finally going to start looking for a partner. It's time, he thinks, to stop focusing on the past letting it bog him down and keep him from moving forwards, because Tubbo's a pilot. Looking back really shouldn't be his thing. He's good, and he's fast, and he's going to leave these thoughts and feelings that only weigh him down in his star trails. Tubbo grins a little to himself, feeling better than he has in a few days, and tips his head up now that he's away from the front entrance, freezes in his tracks, with white noise ringing in his ears seeing the Asachi in front of him. Can't be. Shouldn't be. You've lost it. The figure on the cargo ramp, the one swinging long legs back and forth, bag dumped at his side, dark head swiveling in his direction, binary sun eyes. And Tubbo doesn't think. Takes off running and plows full steam into Ronbu. Nearly takes them both over. But Rambu throws a foot out and keeps them upright, arms going tight around his back, tail snapping and coiling around legs. You came. You're here. You waited. Tubbo latches onto him like a limpet, burying his face in the soft material of his shirt, and almost cries feeling the prick of claws along his back, digging in sharply above his wings, laughs short of breath and wild. You're here. You, you, I didn't think you'd, that you'd wanted, I forgive you. Tubbo shuts up immediately, lifts his head in a stupor to see Rambu looking down at him with honesty and a little fear in his eyes, but he's trusting Tubbo with this, with himself, and it makes Tubbo's nose sting with the hot prick of tears at this precious thing he's been given. He moves one of his hands up to cup Rambu's cheek drags a thumb under his red eye. One in a million. No one else like him. 
your friend, your gunner, your partner. And Rambu leans into the touch, tilts his head down without any prompting whatsoever. I'm sorry it took me so long. Rambu whispers, rocking their foreheads together while Tebo's antenna run over his lone horn. Incense smoke and stardust and the great beyond and home. That real, genuine smile Tebo's come to adore so much, twitching his lips up. But I don't want to be alone anymore, Bo. I'm here, Boo, and I'm never going anywhere else. You won't have to be alone ever again. Tebo promises around a few wayward tears, but they're happy this time. Elation glowing so strongly in his chest, there has to be light spilling out between his ribs. Heart stuttering when Rambu pulls back enough to knock their foreheads together, trilling deep in the back of his throat. And neither will you. The cargo ramp is retracted, hatch doors closing and locking with a muffled boom. Last of the stuff stowed away, all systems operational, EC sending power to the engines, turbines whirring to life, their delightful thrumming song buzzing up through Tubbo's hands where they're wrapped confidently around the controls of the Asachi. Mahari's spaceport disappearing below them, the wide, yawning maw of space opening before him like the greatest of gifts. Come on, Tubbo says, turning to look across the cockpit at Ronbu, with his glowing eyes and shy smile bearing sharp fangs, at his best friend, his partner. And Tebo can't stop smiling, hand flexing around the throttle, about to send them streaking into light speed, into whatever the future holds. Let's go home.